Hello! In case you haven't heard, there is a new C-Star in town. The C-Star S30. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with the C-Star S50, which has been out now for about a year. And as you probably know, the 50 in the S50 name comes from the telescope's 50 millimeter objective lens. So you probably already guessed, if you don't know already, that the S30 is a smaller 30 millimeter lens. And that is one of the big differences between the S30 and the S50. Now, I'll go into more detail into what the smaller uh, lens means, why a ZWO probably went smaller, and my guess as to why a ZWO went smaller instead of larger with the S30. Um, the, some other big differences between the two telescopes are um, the S30's uh, shorter focal length. It is 150 millimeters instead of 250 millimeters on the S50. It is a much more compact uh, form factor, making it even more portable than the already very portable S50. And, as you may have heard, in addition to the uh, narrow-filled lens, this is under the S50, it has a wide-angle lens. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. Why did ZWO go smaller instead of bigger? Um, if you've looked at any of the online discussion about the S30, this is one of the biggest complaints about the S30, especially from people who already own the S50. They want a bigger lens, not a smaller one. Now, if you're new to actual photography or photography in general, there's two reasons why you'd want a bigger lens instead of a smaller one. Uh, the biggest reason, especially for actual photography, is a larger lens gathers more light in the same amount of time, which is really important when you're taking pictures of really faint uh, night sky objects. The other reason you'd want a bigger lens instead of a smaller is that a bigger lens has a higher angular resolution, which means that it can resolve finer detail in objects. Uh, so this is why many S50 owners have been waiting for a C-Star with a larger lens instead of a smaller one. So if a bigger lens is better, why did ZWO go smaller instead of bigger? Well, the biggest downside of a larger lens is that uh, larger lenses are much more expensive. And C-Stars so far are very much targeted at budget-friendly audience. Now, if you're new to astrophotography or astronomy telescopes, you may look at the you know, 350, $450, $500 price points and think that's not very cheap. But by comparison, um, you could easily spend two or three thousand dollars on what would be considered an entry level uh, traditional astrophotography rig uh, with a separate mount telescope, camera, guide scope, guide camera, and a controlling computer. Uh, so to have all that packaged into a five hundred dollar or less bundle is really remarkable. Um, as a another point of comparison, if you could try to build a system with similar specs to the S50, um, a entry level 50 millimeter apochromatic telescope just by itself will cost you about $400, and that doesn't count uh, mount, camera, guiding, or any of the other accessories that you would need for a traditional astrophotography rig. So. Uh, the C-Stars with the S30 and the S50 are incredibly budget-friendly options for people who are interested in natural photography. And that brings us to why I think the WO went with a smaller lens instead of a larger one. And that is price point. The S30 has a price point of $350, which is about $100 less than the S50. Although you can get it on sale uh, for about $450 many times, especially now with uh, Black Friday. And besides price point, another advantage of the smaller lens is it accommodates the S30's tiny but mighty uh, marketing slogan, 
which speaks to its smaller form factor than even the S50, which is already very compact. It's about two inches shorter than the S50 and also about two inches uh, narrower. And it's about half the weight of the S50. The S50 weighs about 6.6 .6 pounds and the S30 weighs about 3.6 pounds. So besides the smaller 30 millimeter objective, another difference between the S30's main camera and the S50's main camera is the uh, shorter focal length, 150 millimeters versus 250 millimeters. Now, focal length plus um, the size of the sensor determines the field of view for a telescope imaging system or any digital camera. So the shorter uh, focal length of the S30 provides almost twice the field of view as the S50 uh, on its primary camera. The S50 has a field of view of about, um, I think it's 1.3 degrees by 0.7 degrees, whereas the S30 has a field of view of about 2.13 degrees by about 1.2 degrees. So not quite twice, but pretty close. So if you've used the S50's mosaic feature, or in the app is called framing, it's almost equivalent to a 2x zoom or a 2x2 mosaic with the S50. So it's going to frame up larger deep time objects much better than the S50 will. Throw in mosaic with the S30 and you get an even larger field of view. Another difference on the main camera with the S30 is while the sensor size is and resolution are about the same, it does have a different camera chip. Whereas the S50 has Sony's IMX462 uh, camera sensor, the S30 has Sony's IMX662 with the Starbus 2 light enhancement system. So that means is that the resulting images, the resolution will be similar, but with the Starbus 2, the camera does a better job of compensating for low light scenarios. So it will, even though the 30 millimeter lens gathers less light, the camera is more sensitive to that light, offsetting at least somewhat the limited light gathering capability. So you're not gonna be paying the full penalty in uh, image capturing of a smaller lens. Now, probably the biggest distinction between the two telescopes is the S30 has a second lens, a wide field lens, about 23 degrees. Now, I say wide field, but it's still narrow compared to what you would get uh, with your normal human field of vision or uh, you know your cell phone camera without zooming in. So, you know, as a comparison, if you hold your hands out about like this at arm's length, that's going to be roughly 23 degrees, give or take a few degrees. Um, another comparison, the full Orion constellation is about 18 degrees. So the water filled view is going to be great for um, landscape or daytime use. And it's also going to be really nice for gathering much larger structures in the night sky than you would be able to get with the S50 or with the S30's main camera. Um, so that gonna be quite up the task for doing like full sky imaging, you know, the big expansive Milky Way shots. Um, I don't be able to do that, at least not without taking many, many panels and creating a large mosaic. But it will be very nice for things like the Orion Cloud Complex or uh, the Summer Nebula Complexes or taking nice pictures of small and medium-sized constellations. And as I already said, another difference between the S30 and S50 is the price point. The S30 is coming in at about $350 US dollars versus about $500 for the S50. Now, my question would be if you don't yet own a smart telescope and you're interested in getting one, which one should you get? 
Or if you already own an S50, is it worth either replacing it with an S30 or getting an S30 as an additional smart telescope? And that really comes down to uh, both your budget and what you're looking for. Uh, what you're looking for in the night sky. So if you're constantly, uh, say you have an S50 and you're constantly wishing that you had a bigger field of view, larger nebula or the Andromeda galaxy, you know, the larger objects, then the S30 definitely would be a good option for you to get those larger objects. Um, on the other hand, if you're interested in so smaller objects like solar system, or you know, planetary nebula, smaller, more distant galaxies. The S50 with a smaller field of view and longer focal length is going to be the better option for you. Uh, on the other hand, if you really like, you know, we want to be able to take great images of both the smaller objects and the larger ones, and you have the budget, then having both telescopes could be a great option for you as well. Uh, lastly, as I'm filming this, it is Black Friday 2024. The S30 is still on pre-order. Shipping expected to begin in December. Now, pre-order has been going on for months now, and shipping will be first in, first out, meaning those who ordered first will get their uh, order first. Um, what that means is if you're hoping to buy this as a Christmas gift in 2024, it's probably not going to arrive by Christmas. It, it may be, depending on how quickly they can ramp up manufacturing, it could be January or even February. Now, I expect they're going to ramp up manufacturing and fulfill their orders fairly quickly, as in over a time span of weeks instead of months, based on how quickly they fulfilled S50 orders and uh, you already know what the high demand was for the S50, and I assume they're expecting similar demand for the S30. So they would have ramped up manufacturing to the highest capacity they, they could manage. All right. um, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy content like this, um, previews and what's coming in the world of astrophotography, please comment uh, below. And as always, thank you for watching my channel. Um, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's turned out test sirens going on right now. <laughs> Just waiting for that. Um, now, 